Reef Teats is sponsored by Brightwell Aquatics and Bulk Reef Supply. Today we're going to talk about raising pH in your reef tank. What's going on guys? Devin from Reef Dudes. Now it's winter time in a lot of the world now. You're starting to close up the windows in your house and you might notice the pH in your tank starting to tank. Um, it's one thing I've noticed recently. Uh, the tank was struggling to hit, you know, 7.8. It was like 7.7, 7.8, you know, 7.9 on the high, which was like really on the low side for me. So I decided it's kind of time to deal with it. Um, one thing I actually did pick up, if you guys watched the video or the live stream I did last week with Mike Pletta, we were talking about CO2 levels and CO2 meters. Um, so I actually picked up the meter he recommended, you know, currently around 830 ppm of CO2 in the house. Um, outside, fresh air is around 400, so it's about double that right now. Um, usually under a thousand is not too bad. If you're getting, you know, 1500 plus, then you know it's really want to do something to deal with that. Um, so we're doing okay, but the thing is those elevated levels of CO2 in the air are going to kind of level out with the water in your tank and it's going to absorb that CO2, which in turn is going to give you a lower pH inside of your tank. Now, so the best way to raise the pH in the tank is to lower the CO2 levels being absorbed into the water. Um, so step one, the first thing that I did was run an outside airline to the skimmer. Now my tank is in the middle of the house, so it's not like a true, true outside airline, but pretty darn close. What I actually did is went straight up in the wall into the attic. So I'm pulling in fresh air from the attic and letting the skimmer suck that in. Now there's probably about 15, to 17 feet of hose there. And when you're going that far, you don't want to restrict the airflow too much. So you want to use a larger diameter hose. So I actually used a half inch inner diameter hose um, to actually figure out where to put it. Um, there's a lot of measuring and just kind of figure out exactly where it was. It's a little trickier to figure out where a wall is in the attic, but I measured off some known points like windows and you know, the kind of the deck door over there and figured it out. Thankfully, first try I got the hole in the right spot and was able to push the hose down and get it directly inside of the wall behind the tank. I'm 99% certain I found the right wall. My little Forrester bit was not long enough. So hopefully this works. So from down below, I put a flashlight shining up. It's a little coral one, so you can kind of see the little purple down there, which means I got the right one. So all that measuring paid off. Now I got it. And I got roughly 15 feet of half inch in diameter line. So this should just fit. We're gonna poke this down, run it to the tank and the skimmer. And then up in the attic, I'm gonna use some kind of an air filter for now. I might just use like a RO sediment filter with one of those ones I use for the tank cleaner. So like the 50 micron one. And later I think I might do some CO2 scrubbing media on it and I think we'll be good. So I got the hole coming up and I just use Velcro to Velcro tie strap to put it onto the joist and got this filter in here so it will suck through there. Got that 50 micron to string filter so super big but it'll stop all the particles and I got the roof cap here so it's basically sucking fresh air as close as I can get. It'll still be in fully protected and still got my little pre-filter on there so hopefully this makes a decent improvement on the tank. So taking a look at my pH for the last week or so, so looking back a few days, so 7.75, the, the lowest 7.72, super duper low. Now you can see right around this point is where I added the outside airline to the skimmer. And that went up from 7.71 to 7.81, so that's a 0.1 boost, which in my opinion is a pretty awesome little jump. Um, also, if you look at the highest from the previous day, we had 7.92. 7.89 now the next day high was 7.98 so brought up my lows and my highs pretty much straight across the board so i let that run for about two days just let things kind of level out and after that i proceeded to step two and that was installing the secondary chamber to my calcium reactor now with the calcium reactor you are basically injecting co2 into your tank via your effluent 24 7 you're dripping it in so that makes the ph battle a little bit more of a struggle um, so adding a secondary chamber gives your effluent or the output of your calcium reactor more contact time with media, and it gives more time for that media to soak up the CO2. And as the CO2 is soaked up, it's gonna raise the pH of that effluent as well as give you a little bit of a boost in elk. So that's kind of win-win. So adding that on, so previous day, we went up to 8.02, 8.03, 8.04. 
So it wasn't a huge boost on that yet, but I've noticed that my lows are starting to be higher. So if you look at that, it's 7.84. Next day was, yeah, 7.83. Now the day after, 7.86. So it was only kind of like a half a point boost overall, but it's been slowly raising my lows. Now this has only been like a day or two since I did it. So I'm kind of hoping I'm gonna see that trend keep raising as it kind of works that CO2 out of the water. Now the next step to this plan is gonna be adding on some CO2 media. So you got your soda lime or those type of products and what they do is absorb CO2 in the air. So now I'm hoping that if I had that inline, take out the sediment filter and put in that CO2 media, it's gonna further suck out more CO2 out of the air going into it and make it super low, pristine air going into the skimmer, which should overall raise it. Um, now another step that you could do is if you do have a higher CO2 levels inside of your home, if you have a lot of people living in there, you know, your windows, everything's closed up for the winter, every time someone breathes out, you're putting CO2 into the air. Um, what you could do, I mean, if it's nice out, I mean, open a window, free, cheap, and easy. If you, you know, don't have that option, it's a bit colder, you can look into an air exchanger. Um, and what that does is it'll take air from outside and kind of basically just swap with air from inside. Now, if you're in a colder climate, you can do a heat recovery ventilator, or an HRV. And that's basically one that mixes those airs through a bit of a radiator. So it uses your, outs your inside air to pre-warm the outside air. So it makes it a very efficient way to do it. Now, that's another step I'm going to look at doing just for the whole house. This is gonna be better for everybody as well as for the tank. And hopefully it'll drop those levels down to, you know, closer to an outside level, which is about the best we're gonna get. So lots of ways that you guys can go to kind of increase the pH in your tank. Um, if you don't have the ability to get outside air to your tank, I mean, that's the free option. That's kind of one of the best ways to do it. Another thing that you can look at is using the soda lime and do a CO2 scrubber, but you can do the recirculating method where you're basically sucking air from your skimmer and then feeding it through the medium back into your skimmer. That way actually makes the media last quite a while. And I'd say that's probably about one of your best bets if you don't have access to draw outside air. Um, another thing you can do is using a Kalkwasser reactor. Now, this will raise your pH. However, you're not necessarily solving the source of the problem. You're kind of masking it up, but you're still raising that pH. So, it's not fully fixing it, but it is boosting up the pH. So that's another potential option you can look at is dripping Kalkwasser or using Kalkwasser off dose your tank. And I am doing that on my frag tank and that one, you know, it gets up to 8.1 where this one's barely grazing eight with the outside air. So it definitely does make an impact on it. But my goal is to fix the overall source and just lower the overall CO2 levels in the home, in the tank and just raise it naturally overall. And I think we'll be in a pretty good place after that. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this. A um, little bit of a deep dive into pH and my battles over the past couple weeks and what I'm doing to help raise things up. And it's awesome to see the lines trending upwards and upwards to the happy place. So if you guys enjoyed this, as always, hit that like button. If you're new, make sure you subscribe. And I'll catch you guys on the next video.